see you again. Appreciate it. Uh, you'll have to let me know whether the live is doing okay. Mandy, thank you for being here. Um, so the connection has been fairly decent, but tonight it's kind of acting a little squirrely. Uh, actually, all day it has been. It comes to watching the lives and everything. But So let me know how the live goes uh, as far as connection. Keep me posted in that. And uh, again, uh, TikTok has allowed us to replay our lives and download them so i have been able to take the lives download them and then upload them to my youtube channel which has saved me a lot of work because i used to have to do the live and then i would have to record uh another episode of the teaching to upload it so this really saves me a lot of time also so uh you will be able to get a hold of this this teaching tonight uh, in case you can't stay here the whole time. So I hope you can, but if you can't, at least stick around long enough to get a nugget. And I've always said that. Get something that you could use. Go back, ponder, meditate on, and it, I've, I'm sure it'll be a benefit to you. So, uh, but thank you all so much for being here. We have Mandy, we have my wife, we have Julian here, and Felicia. And uh, we'll wait just a couple of more minutes uh, before we get into this. I hope you guys saw my last uh, TikTok I, that I, I just put up probably, what, an hour ago, something like that. And uh, uh, it deals with, uh, again, life as the topic. But, you know, when we find the kingdom, we find the very life of God. So, again, I want to talk about uh, that tonight. I really believe that the kingdom life is all that anybody's looking for. So I just want to go through the scriptures tonight and talk a little bit about that. And uh, I am GPM uh, PN. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Appreciate you being here. And uh, P Pant fifty seven. Thank you for being here tonight. Uh, I know people are coming and they're going. It says I got three in here right now, and uh, hopefully we'll get a couple more in here. All right. So without further ado, let me go on and get started. Again, thank you so much for being here tonight. I'm going to be talking about how life is all you need. Life is all you have been designed to desire, to need, to live in, and live out. So let's go over here. Uh, if you're not familiar with my lives, I, I use the Bible. I talk about the Word uh, to help all of us to understand who we are in Christ. Christ meaning the life of God. Okay, that's what Christ is. Christ is the anointed life of God. Christ is not necessarily a person. I thought being the life of God. Okay, that's what Christ is. Christ is the anointed life of God. Christ is not necessarily a person. I thought Christ was Jesus. Uh, is the very thing that uh, you possess on the inside that you and I are supposed to walk out every day. So let's go over here to Genesis chapter 2, and we'll just read some scriptures and hopefully uh, seal this truth into your thinking. I'm telling you, you have to have this in your thinking. If you do not think you can live, then you can't live. I mean, of this in your thinking. If you do not think you can live, then you can't live. A man is what he thinks. He is only you can live. Then you can't live. A man is what he thinks. He is only what he thinks. His outward life is the manifestation of what he thinks on the inside. So there is, that's a law, friends. That's not my opinion. That's not a religious statement. That has nothing to do whether you're Christian or, or uh, Buddhist or whether you're Muslim. It doesn't matter whether you study Shintoism, Mormonism, Jehovah Witness. It doesn't matter what you study. You are what you think you are, and you walk it out every day. If you don't like what you're walking out, Jesus said, repent, which means change the way you think. Because the kingdom, my friends, operates with people's thinking. 
whether it's the kingdom of God, the kingdom of light, or the kingdom of darkness. It still works with your thinking. So knowing that is 98% of the battle. So you don't have a devil just so much arrayed against you, beating you down. You don't have God knocking you in the head. All you have to do is ponder the path of your feet. Ponder it means meditate, think. Where do you want to go? I don't know. I just, I was, I don't really, I don't know what I'm, what am I supposed to do? I don't know. I don't have any sense of purpose, no sense of meaning, no sense of direction. I, I don't know. What am I supposed to do? Well, nobody can tell you what to do. You can get instruction. That's nothing wrong with that. But what you are designed to do is on the inside of you, and you've got to go inside to find that. I can tell you what it is, <laughs> and hopefully, you know, in this teaching and in, and in my other videos, you can discover what I'm, what I'm saying, that God's saying is your purpose and the reason you've been sent here. So Genesis chapter 2, let's take a look at verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Friends, if you breathe into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Friends, if you want to understand your primary purpose for God creating you, it's in that verse. God created you to live. Well, I know I, I get up every morning, man. <laughs> I go work my job. I, I make a living, you know, all right? I, ain't, ain't I doing that right? Come on, pastor. <laughs> what do you mean? No, he said he breathed into man the breath of life. Now, when he talks about breath, he's not just talking about... He's talking about purpose through life. He breathed into man the purpose of life. In other words, life's purpose can be displayed through the man, through that physical body. So he created a body that would house the very purpose of man, the intention of God, which was to reveal that would house the very purpose of man, the intention of God, which was to reveal the very life of God in a natural world. So he had to put his life in a natural body. That's your purpose. To manifest the Father, to manifest the life of God. That's your purpose. You can't get around that no matter how many times we come up with our alternative plans. I want to be a preacher. I want to be a teacher. I want to be a, a. I want to be a dentist. I want to be. All these things are just platforms, by which we focus the very life of God in and manifest His glory. Now, the greatest way a dentist can manifest the glory is not through those little machines. <laughs> you know. I run from that stuff. I try to get away from all that stuff. <laughs> you know, and the, and the, the big old needle that comes your way, right? I'm not thinking of God. <laughs> I'm thinking, Lord, take me out of here maybe. But I'm not thinking that's really the handiwork of the Lord. No, no, no. The greatest way a dentist can manifest God's glory is to be able to take those teeth by the power that he or she possesses and bring illumination to the mind of the person that has the teeth that are rotten or tore up and all that and get them to believe in the power that's within them and their teeth would get straight just like that. I know that's hocus pocus stuff, right? That's the dreamy stuff. That stuff only happens in heaven. Well, what? why do we have the dentist and the doctors and all these things? Because mankind has fallen short of the very life and the glory of God. So he's always seemingly in this deteriorated position or going in a direction by which he's going farther from the glory and the life he possesses. 
instead of attaining it, manifesting it, exhibiting it, revealing it, however, unveiling it, however you want to put it. We're trying to run to God, and in truth, we're running from him, for he dwells within us. That's Christ, okay? But a part I want you to see is that this is the reason God created man, is so that he could create a house, which is the physical body, for his life. Not man's life, God's life. See, man is the offspring of God's life. And the body is just the light house that reveals the light in the house. You know, and, and we can show people the way to God by becoming the light house. Be the house by which the life of God is manifested. That's, that's key. Now, we don't hear this in the church. You know, we, we don't really hear it. We just talk about, you know, well, let this little light shine and let's go out and hand out a gospel track and tell people about Jesus. But never bring them a revelation or a, a, an idea to even think that there is a life in them that they have never seen, never apprehended, never tapped into. They've not even had the conscious awareness of how much power they have. And this is why the pastors and the ministers are going to be held so accountable because they're supposed to know this stuff. And I'm finding out that, well, the pastors and all are not learning it in the sem seminaries. They're not learning it in the schools. They're learning about Christianity, but they're not learning about how to operate in Christ. And a lot of the stuff we see on the television and televangelists and all this stuff, you know, you got to be really careful. You know, you don't know what to believe. When only the church and the cameras and all that and, and the those... Uh, uh, networks that carry those programs are the only ones benefiting from it and you don't hear them in the the uh other news bands and all that other news channels and all that stuff not hearing it on cen how somebody was raised from the dead you really got to question it then the lord told me he said the works of the lord jesus christ will be performed in my life and he told me the things that would happen would shock the media that means the media's got to find out about it you see, so it's not about trying to appease Christianity or appease a religion or appease some church you go to and, and, and just try to do all those rituals and think you're going to find your sense of purpose there. You're not. You're going to find your sense of purpose when you find Genesis over here and you get to chapter two and you read verse seven and you say, Lord God, you formed me of the dust of the ground. And you breathe into my nostrils the breath of life. Now, God, my whole purpose is to reveal your life. When you get to that place, you stop trying to seek all these other things, and you have to go inward to do that. you got to go inside and say, Now, Lord, how does this breath of life function in me? How do I get it to manifest? Now, let's go over here to the 15th verse of this chapter in Genesis chapter 2. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and keep it. Now, I'm going to tell you this again. Another explanation, a revelation of your purpose. That life is all you need. Your purpose is described in this verse. He said that he took the man. That man represents the breath of God. It's the life of God. It's Christ in you. It's the very life. And he put that life in the Garden of Eden. Now, don't, you got to get out of your thinking that it's a real garden out there. So, uh, look at those trees and those bushes and plants. And look at that, the Garden of Eden. No. He's, he's talking about your body. Eden means spot, moment, presence, open door, delightful place. That's what your body is, friend. Now, you might look in the mirror and go, I don't feel like I'm the spot, the moment, the presence, a delightful place, or open door for nothing. <laughs> you feel rotten. But see, that body represents Eden. But the man put 
in Eden is your spirit. Your spirit was placed in this body to do what? To tend to it and to keep it. Your spirit life was meant to keep this body alive. Your spirit life was meant to, to feed this body all the wisdom, the knowledge that it would ever need. Remember the Bible says over there in Philippians 4, 19, he says that God supplies all our need according to his riches and glory by Christ. Isn't that right? Christ. Christ didn't use the hope of glory. Christ is the life of God. It's Christ Jesus, Christ or the life that was in Jesus that you and I have partakers of. We have become partakers of his divine nature, which is his life, which is Christ. And Christ in you is supposed to supply to this natural body. That's your purpose. Now, when everyone else has to work by their hands and the sweat of their brow and they toil and they're just trying to work for 30 years to meet their needs and you're living by Christ in you and all your needs just somehow have come your way. They come to you. You don't have to go after them. Everybody that is out there trying to, to do, 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 man, they're going after things. They're going after a better life. Now, I'm not saying it's wrong to go work a job. What I'm saying is, is if that becomes your primary way of your provision, you have fallen short of the glory of Christ within you. That's supposed to supply your need. If the only way you get your needs supplied is through some other outside source, you ain't found Christ yet. You haven't found your purpose. Because when you can supply the need through Christ in you to all that you have before you, you're going to get people's attention. And that's what was happening with Jesus. He was supplying the need, which that need was life. He was giving life or showing, revealing life to everybody around him that were desperate enough to want it. You know, the biggest problem I seem to have is getting people hungry enough to want the life of God, to want the knowledge of it. There's not many hungry people out there that really want to know God, go after life, understand who they are, and manifest the Father. They don't want to do the things that Jesus did. We would rather be like the Pharisees and Sadducees and have a big ministry and have all the little bells and whistles and all that and the nice cars and the nice houses and, and just, oh, and it's just wonderful. And then people come to you and you got to beg them for all the money and all the supply and it's not coming out of you. It's coming from them. And that's because they're asking and begging for it all the time. Now, I'm, I hate every time I get up here, I got to get on that subject. But that's the problem. Is that we're going to other places to get the supply when the supply is ever with you on the inside. So, you and I have got to find a way to learn how to tap into this power. And I'm telling you, you can... And you must, if not, if you don't tap into the power of God, you're going to die like every, like a mere man. <laughs> you, you just, there won't be any difference in your life. And I start getting on this subject, people really start, you know, thinking I'm off. And yet, when you put them in a situation where death is standing at the door, they're looking for somebody who's in authority to get them out of it. All you got to do is look at the stories in the Bible. You'll find that out. Anytime somebody got in a situation where, where there was some, some death looming, <laughs> they're looking for somebody in authority to get me out of here. <laughs> you know? So uh, that's natural. See, if you think death is a friend, why is everybody crying at the funeral? We all ought to be celebrating. Well, another one's gone home, <laughs> you know, you know they don't feel that way. They're sad. They're, they're teary-eyed. Well, I'm just going to miss them because they ain't going to be with me. But I know they're in a better place. Well, I'm thinking if they're in a better place, why did God send us here? <laughs> why, did he, why did he send us from the better place to this place? I mean, that to me would say, well, where's the loving God at? But see, because I understand that God in us is the place he prepared. I mean, that to me would say, well, where's the loving God at? But see, because I understand that God in us 
is the place he prepared. You understand um, that the, the primary focus for and, and purpose for your life is to live. So uh, Deuteronomy 30 to 19, it says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. In other words, this is recorded. <laughs> and you can't get away from this. This is recorded because he's getting ready to tell you what's important in the mind of God ought to be important in your mind. I call heaven and earth to record this day that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, since it's been set before you and you're not going to be able to deny it, whether in this realm or any other realm that I've set it before you, therefore you choose. It's your choice. You choose. Now, my question is, do you choose to live or do you choose to die? Because you cannot live and you cannot die without your choice. It's your choice. You're not just some pawn that God's got a hold of on the head that picks you up and takes you where he wants you to be. No, you are the deciding factor. He said, I set heaven and earth before you, blessing and cursing, life, death, blessing and cursing. You choose. Now, why he want you to choose? Because that's where it shows your focus and your loyalties. You got to choose. Do you side in with life or do you side in with death? In other words, do you choose the tree of life or do you choose the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Because the, the choice has never changed. Even when Adam sinned and and death fell upon Adam and every other human being. God sent prophets into the earth to preach the word of life, to give man an opportunity to choose life again. Of course, as the years had gone by, man built a paradigm of thinking that he had to die. That was part of the blessing of the Lord now. That's what, that's what we do when we don't know how to get out from something. We make that something part of God's plan. <laughs> See that? Something bad happens. Well, I guess God did that to teach me something so that it would turn to my good. That's called ignorance gone to seed because God doesn't do that. You see, you can only go left when you don't look right. You see, if you're supposed to go right and you go left... <laughs> Just because you look left. That's the reason you went left. You only go in the direction of your most dominant thought. And if you ain't thinking right, like, right, Lee, I'm going to tell you right now, you ain't going to make right choices. Righteousness deals with God's way he desires for you to live. And there's only one way to live, and it's the right way. And that's why he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his right way of living. That's what righteousness means, the right way of doing things. Well, death is not in God's equation. Why do we keep choosing it? Because it's all we've been trained to do. It's to ch and because that, we choose it. I mean, subconsciously, we're choosing death. As you start talking about somebody died, well, everybody's like, well, yeah, yeah, I figured that was going to happen. Yeah, yeah that fourth stage of cancer really gets them every time. You know, you start talking about life, people start thinking you're nuts. But that just proves the paradigm of humanity to accept the death, forget the life, just accept the death as the way it's supposed to be. So he set this life, death, blessing, cursing before us so that we would choose that both thou and thy seed may live. So the choices we make are going to affect our children, our children's children, and so forth. The, can you see what God's done here? You see, when Adam made a choice, it affected all of humanity. So he says, I tell you what, I'm going to send you a prophet. I'm going to send you a word. And when you hear the word, you get to make a choice. Why? So you can take the same program Adam did to bring about death, and you can bring about life to everyone in your life. Your children, your children's children. See, he's given us the same power and ability to do that. But if you don't believe any word that's given to you, if you don't believe any of it, 
I mean, I preach life to a lot of people. Not many believe it. <laughs> but then the way is narrow, isn't it? You know, you can talk about speaking in tongues. You can talk about dancing a jig. And you can talk about just being slain in the spirit. You're going to have a lot of people think it's squirrely. But there are a lot of people out there that really believe in it. Oh, yeah, I speak in tongues all the time. Yeah, I, yeah, I, he, he cast out a devil. You know, and it's all... You're always going to find a group like that. But when you start talking about you're going to live in this earth apart from death, you can do it. Do it today. You're going to have them over here speaking in tongues going on. What are you talking about? You're going to have them over there so conservative in this other area say, that boy is crazy. Why? Because this really is the narrow path. Life. It's not religion. Well, if I'm Baptist, well, that's not too narrow. We're in the Bible Belt, man, down here. Baptists kind of like started it all, didn't they? You know, Catholic or whatever religion you are, there's always a section where it's very broad, where it de determines what country you're in, and you got the broad way over there. Go to India. I mean, Hind Hinduism is big over there, man. Don't have it much over here, but go to India. Boy, it's the broad way. But if you talk about living apart from death over in India, it got very narrow. No, you got to die because that's the way their God has said. Then you got to come back, you know, maybe to somebody else or something else. So, let's go to John chapter 10. And again, I'm just trying to give you some scriptures to help you get grounded in what you're actually pursuing in life or what you're supposed to pursue. John chapter 10, verse 10, The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. Now you can take the stealing, the killing, and the destroying, and put it as the primary factor. The tree, if you will, that the whole world's way of thinking branches off of. Stealing, Killing and destroying. That's what it's all about. Now, it, it, it's in different levels, you know. Some of it is very subtle. But the world system, it functions off of that. But you start finding out what Jesus said. He said, I am come. Not I will come the second time, the third time, the fourth sometime in the future. I am come. And he said this 2,000 years ago. I am come that they might have. Have what? Life. Well, I just want a better life. No, you want the life. The life. Where's that at? In the kingdom. It's kingdom life. Now, in the kingdom, there is no death. So that describes the kind of life that's in the kingdom. It's a life with no death. It's a life with where there's no more tears, no more funerals, no more sickness, no more disease, no more headache, no more poverty, no more, get this, no more needs. In the kingdom, you no longer have a provisionary type of mindset. Always focused on what you need. Provision. In the kingdom, in life, life is the provision. And when you have the kingdom and the life of it, everything comes to you. So you're not in this position where you're needing everything all the time. You look more at your life as if your life becomes the supply. Not just for you, but it becomes your message. It becomes what you supply the world that knows nothing of it. That's the heartbeat of God in you. God's not interested in whether you get the nice car, the nice house, the, the food that you want. He's not concerned all about that. He just wants you to understand life. Because you can get all of that by the world and the system that it's trained you to do. You can always get those things. It depends how hard you want to work. How much education or skill you want to work on it. You can always get that. You don't have to know God to do all that. But if you're going to get it God's way, if you're going to walk in the things that, that God's promised to do, you're going to have to tap into his life 
and you have to show your loyalties and your focus to that. You can't do that if you don't know anything about it, and that's why I come up here. Try to get people aware of this. So the thief coming not before to steal, kill, destroy, I am come that you might have life, that you might have it more abundantly. And let me go to this last scripture in 1 John chapter 2, verse 25. 1 John chapter 2, verse 25. And this is the promise that he hath or has already promised us even eternal life. So the promise of the Father is not just speaking in tongues. It's not just prophesying. It's not dreaming dreams. It's not going through all the those things that you know, plant a seed and reap a harvest. No, the promise was that you would again be able to house the Father, which is source, power, called life. That's the promise. The very thing Adam lost in the Garden of Eden, God said, if you partake of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall surely die. What does that mean? He'd lose access to the life. A veil, friend, was put between, in Adam's mindset, a veil was put between what he knew about the glory and the life within him to where he could no longer see his potential, his power, his ability to live beyond death, and he turned to his external senses, and that's where he designed and leveled his life out with what he could see his power, his ability to live beyond death, and he turned to his external senses, and that's where he designed and leveled his life out with what he could see, hear, smell, taste, and touch, and that killed him. He moved him closer and closer to snuffing his own life out because he couldn't see it anymore. There was a veil that was put between the man's thinking. He couldn't see it. Well, that's true. See, the more you look to your carnality, the more you see it. Well, the more you see your carnality, the less you see your spiritual power, the less you see your spiritual potential. Whatever you're focused on, that's it. That's what you are. That's what you become. I've had a life of proving that. You think carnal, you do carnal acts. But if you begin to think spiritual, you'll have spiritual acts coming out of you flowing out of you, words, ideas, concepts that can only take place by the instigating of the life within you that causes things to happen around you that you don't have to physically go out there and just do all the time. It's just supernatural. It's a life that cares for you. When the Bible said, cast all your care upon him, he's not saying, well, take all your needs and cast them to the Lord. How do you do that? Here, Essa. It's my water bill. <laughs> you know, it don't work that way. No, but if you can take what you see with your natural eye and come to understand that your provision comes from inside, you can cast all your care for your water bill, your light bill, your rent, all that stuff. You can cast it upon your inner man and say, now, nah, thank you that I have all this already supplied on the inside, so I don't really have a need. I've got it. I've got the supply. The, the bill is just a notice. It's letting me know what it's making demand upon, and I'm just going to the source, which is life in me. And we begin to live that way and think that way, then we'll get the demonstration of it little by little. The Bible says you have to go little by little because the mind, we're trained to learn little by little. Not many people get immersed in things. We, we take it little by little, you know. We can't take but so much. But the promise of God is the very life Adam lost, and that's the only promise. Ah, there are 7,000 promises in the Bible. I guarantee you, you take all those promises, all of those promises that are there trying very, very hard to get you away from the life, you can find out that this promise of life takes all those promises 
And all those things are encompassed in the very life of God. All those good things that you desire, it's in life. The good thing is you already have the life. You got life within you. So I just want you to understand that. Believe that. Hunger for that. Know that with all your heart. And if you don't know it, then please just connect to me. Go to my YouTube channel and subscribe to it. You can get there by going in my TikTok and just hitting on the link there. I know I don't have a whole lot of people up here right now, but somebody's going to watch this video on YouTube and they're going to figure this thing out. They're going to see it somewhere and they're going to they're going to get connected to these videos and and uh, and learn the things that they really need to focus on. So, but anyway, I want to thank everybody for being here, uh, Tommy and Jessica and Julie and and uh, Mandy and Felicia and the ones that, that are proven to be so faithful. I appreciate all of you so very much. And I hope you got something out of this teaching. God bless you guys. I'll be back very, very soon until we meet again. I'm Adam King. Bye-bye.